Hello, welcome back to Venture Plot. We're in the poly tunnel today because it's been absolutely pouring outside. And one minute it's sunny and then it's pouring with rain. And, and there's a lot to do in the garden now, isn't there? There's so much going on. We're getting into April and there are just so many seeds you can grow. So I thought what we'd do is we'd have a quick look at the number of seeds or that I'm going to be sowing in the next week or so and that you can be too if you're in the UK. Well, that I suppose does depend a bit on your frost dates, but for many of you, um, if you've got an indoor growing space like a polytunnel or a greenhouse, you can be sowing things uh, right on now. It's just a really good time of year to get going. I mean, all the buds are bursting, the birds are singing. It's just, it's a lovely time of year. Anyway, so as I say, we've got a tray full of seeds to look at. Uh, then I want to have a quick look at the tomatoes, which we sowed a couple of weeks ago. The seeds, we've got 100% germination rate on them, which has been really nice from safe seeds and new seeds. Uh, but then we've also got the um, sweet peas, which we sowed as well, which the germination rate's been a bit iffy. <laughs> anyway, right, let's get on, have a quick look through these seeds and look at all the exciting things we can be growing this year. So first up, we're going to start with a really easy one, and that radishes. Now, these are a new one to me. They're sort of a rainbow mix colour pack, uh, which I haven't grown before. They're sort of a sort of a round to pear shaped, but they're quite peppery and spicy, which I really like. Uh, I quite often grow uh, French breakfast, which are a taller, longer, thinner one, which grow really well, and have grown really well in the polytunnel. But I did something like this last year, and they grew really well. So, yeah. First one's first, the easiest first is radishes. Can be sown sort of indoors or out. In fact, sometimes I'll sow them into these small cells um, just to seed in each one, get them going, and then when they're about an inch or two high, I'll just pop them out in the allotment. Just, to, just depends, it's just an easy way to get them going. Right, enough of that. That's the first one, radishes. Right, the next one up you can get going now are your leeks, and these are mussel burr leeks. In fact, I sowed some about, I think, on the 12th of March, and these are beginning to germinate already, if you can see them. Um, I love the way leeks germinate. They come up with the, the stalk sort of bent over, and then as the end of the tip pops out, it straightens up and grows upright. So, yeah, the mussel burr leeks are up already, so if you haven't sown your leeks, you can do. I just sprinkle mine in a pot liberally with a little bit of compost over top, keep them more watered and they come up. So yeah, I did these in a video a couple of days ago, so I'll refer to that down below. Right, so the next one up, nice one, easy one to start, are your leeks. Right, the next one up, which actually a lot of people find quite tricky, and I did until a couple of years ago, but then I discovered a new little um, way of doing, which works really well for me. And um, we'll go out and we'll harvest some, and I'll show you what they look like, and we'll dig one up. Uh, but what they are is celeriac, and these are celeriac neon. They're an F1, uh, and these are the ones that I grew last year. And the tip to do them is to grow them in tubs. And you have plenty of food and um, compost and so on, and manure and so on in the tubs. Um, but then I stand the tubs in trays. Uh, what that does is enables you to keep water in around the bottom of the tub. Uh, and the celeriac really like sort of a damp, moist environment. So these are on a westerly facing fence, so they're protected from the easterly winds and the northerly winds in my bit of the garden, but they've done really well this, uh, this year. So, and really tasty to uh, celeriac, really nice. So if you fancy having these, uh, giving these a go and you had trouble on the allotment, it might dry out too much, try growing them in tubs in sort of a shadyish sort of area in your garden. Um, yeah, and see how you get on with that. So that's number three, that's celeriac. Now, if you haven't done so already, it's probably getting a bit late, but according to the seed packet, you can sow your, some, some onions up until the end of March. Um, so I'm gonna try keeping on with these. These are Kamal, they're a red onion, an F1. I mean, last year, according to the record book, I sowed mine in February and had a really good crop. So it's leaving quite a bit later this year, but I'm gonna give it a go. So onions, check your seed packets first, but if you can, make sure you get them in the ground as soon as you can. Okay, number five on the list is kale. We actually love kale in this family. Really nice. I know it's not everybody's favourite, but yeah. Cabello Nero kale and black magic, which is bred, been bred for the British climate, but it's like a Cabello style um, kale. I really can't tell the difference that often on the allotment if the labels have gone missing. But yeah, if you like kale, these can go in now. I sow these into modules indoors and then I'll plant them out on the allotment a little bit later in the year. Tough as well and they'll last right into autumn through the winter. But yeah, one of our staples. Lovely these, Cavalonero kale. 
Right, let's brighten things up a little bit, shall we, and go something with a little bit more colour. Um, if you've got your allotment ready and some lovely tilth soil, then you can be sowing some carrots now. These do really well at this time of year. You might want to put a cloche over them just to keep some warmth to get them going. And then remember to thin them out as you're... Uh, as they grow through the season. Um, I also grow them in tubs behind me in the polytunnel over winter. I've got some lovely young fresh carrots there, which I'll harvest some and show you in a minute. But yeah, if you like carrots, these are fly away. Uh, carrots, as you know, can get um, carrot fly, which are a fly which fly usually no more than a metre off the ground, actually. They can't grow fly much higher than a metre off the ground. And they will lay their eggs around the tops of the carrots and their grubs will bury in them, chip, sort of eat through your carrots which is horrible so you can get some which are carrot fly resistant I think this is one of them this is fly away it's an f1 uh, but I've got others here this is autumn king um, and another one called charisma and they will all be going in the ground in the next couple of weeks and also don't forget with your carrots and many other crops too to successional sow so that you get repeated crops so every say two three weeks sow some more seeds and then you'll get um, a, a continuous crop uh, throughout the season so yeah that's number, what are we up to? Number six, carrots. Right, let's get on to number seven. Number seven, it's cauliflower. Now, I usually don't have much luck with cauliflower. I've tried uh, various varieties, although the last couple of years, I've been growing one called all year round cauliflower and I found the florets not that good. I mean, if you've grown it before, do let me know what you think of it, but I've really struggled to get anything half decent out of it, to be honest. So anyway, this year I'm trying something different. This is from Sutton's, this is cauliflower F1 Sol. Um, yeah, they do like good rich soil compost from the year before. So I'm hoping these do better for me. Uh, and don't forget to net them because they do get munched by the, um, the cabbage white butterfly and various moths and things you have to keep an eye on them throughout the year but i'm going to try really hard this year to get a good decent cauliflower crop anyway right so that's number seven uh cauliflower right for number eight we're going to try some seeds which i grew last year but they didn't do that well but i think it was where they were positioned and these are red cabbage these are cabbage cabeza negra two uh, and I grew them on the allotment, on the church allotment, in a different position to the previous year's crop, which were really good. So I'm going to give them another go and see how they get on. So if you haven't tried cabbage before, they do take up quite a lot of space and they do need netting to keep the uh, cabbage white butterflies and various moths off. But yeah, if you do like red cabbage, especially at Christmas, which I think is delicious, um, yeah, try, try growing some red cabbage this year. And these can be sown in cells now indoors in the polytunnel and then hardened off and transplanted out a little bit later in the year. Right, number nine. Now, <laughs> I've been growing these up on the church allotment for months and they do take an awful long time, but I've never grown these before. And these were uh, broccoli called Claret F1. Uh, and two things took me by surprise. One is how long they take before they crop and two is how tall they get, absolutely enormous. Uh, so. I I'm going to grow them again this year just to use the seeds up but uh, in future I'm going to be looking for some smaller ones but they're absolutely delicious. We harvested a whole basket of them about a week or so ago and they're just becoming into season so uh, it just takes an awful long time. Again like the cabbages and the cauliflowers remember to keep them netted because I think the pigeons and the cabbage whites and so on will love them. Uh, but yeah, if you haven't grown broccoli, try these, but make sure you've got a bit of space and a bit of height as well. <laughs> Probably a, a fruit cage would be best. Anyway, so that's, um, yeah, that's broccoli, uh, sprouting broccoli, I should say, Clara F1. Right, we're up to number 10, believe it or not. Uh, I could probably go on for hours like this. I'm not going to, it won't be much longer. So number 10 is another really easy one. And these are beetroot. Now, last year I grew these, in fact, I grew these for the last few years actually these are burpees golden and they're a beautiful golden yellow color inside not like the traditional sort of maroony red that you get and they're quite sweet so i really like growing these and very easy uh, but this year i was sent some by marshall's uh, sugar salad mix to try haven't grown these before um, but yeah so i multi-sow these into cells yeah about inch and a half two inch cells i'll put three or four in each one uh, and then I'll grow them um, multi sown together and then just take out the largest one as it gets ready and then the others. So yeah, if you haven't grown beetroot, um, 
it's worth trying. Uh, I know some of them can taste a bit earthy, the red ones, so if you like something perhaps a bit sweeter, try Burpees Golden. You might really, really like it. So we're up to number 11. Now this one is a crop that I really like growing each year, and mainly for the leaves, although I think you can eat the stems. Um, but yeah, it's chard, and these are Swiss chard peppermint. And just look at the colours on those stems, they're extraordinary. Anyway, I haven't grown this one before. I usually grow like a multi-coloured variety. But um, yeah, these can go in the ground now and they're quite tough and hardy. Last really well throughout the summer into autumn and winter and so on. You can just harvest the leaves, pick and come again. Really good. But yeah, these can go now. If you haven't grown, grown chard, it's a bit like um, what spinach leaves, I suppose. So it's got that soft, uh, lovely thing, lovely steamed and so on. So yeah, if you haven't grown it before, Try Swiss chard, really, really, really nice. Right, number 12, one of my all-time favorite crops to grow uh, is peas, and these are Hearst Green Shaft. Uh, I sowed these into um, some uh, gutter lengths in my last video, so I'll cut to that and just show you how I was doing that. But yeah, if you like peas, actually there's nothing quite like fresh garden peas popped straight out of the pod. They're just so sweet, there's nothing that compares to them. And really easy to grow actually, you just need to have some sort of support, like netting or stakes or pea sticks. And um, yeah, you can grow these in your allotment, in a pot, in a garden, anywhere. So if you haven't grown peas before, give them a go. These are my favourites at the moment. These are Hearst Green Shaft, absolutely love these. Right, another absolute staple throughout the year in all our salads is lettuce. And you can be sowing lettuce now. Um, I've got a couple of varieties here that I'm trying. Uh, this is Little Gem, Deray Seeds. They're really cheap, these. And these are outrageous. These are new seeds I'm trying from Lucy at She Grows Veg. Really lovely dark purple leaf. Um, and yeah, you can sow lettuces, start them indoors. They don't like a lot of heat, so you don't need a lot of heat to get them going. Um, but they will grow in a polytunnel over winter. In fact, I'll cut to mine now. I've got some really nice lettuces which we're harvesting um, and have been throughout the latter half of the winter and coming into spring. Uh, but yeah, if you fancy a bit of lettuce, there are so many varieties out there. Try something different. Check out She Grows Veg and all sorts of other seed companies. They do all sorts of different types of um, lettuce. You don't just have to stick with little, little gem. Right, number 14, uh, second to last one. Now, these are synonymous with allotments and gardens, and you'll see them all over the country in any allotment site you go to in the summer. We can recognize them by the wonderful sort of teepees and rows of bean poles that we have, and they are runner beans. Yes, you can be sowing your runner beans in April. Now, I might start mine off a little earlier this year in the polytunnel and keep them in here until later on. I think my last spring's about uh, the 10th of April, my last frost, that is. Um, but yeah, if you like growing runner beans, yeah, you can get them in the ground now, or you might want to wait a little bit later until the end of April. Just depends where your last frost date is, really. Uh, these are called Butler, and they have a lovely red flower, um, and they grow really well on my allotment by the house. Not so well up at the church allotment, but really easy to grow. And I think last year, according to the record book, I sow sowed mine on the 16th of April and had a nice crop. So. Yeah, if I could give you one bit of advice if you're new to growing runner beans though, is don't let them get really long. Try and get them a little bit, about 20 centimeters or so, because they're much more tender and tastier too. So yeah, if you haven't grown them before, give runner beans a go. Right, the last and final seeds I'm going to go through in this video, because there are many, many more you can be sowing in April, but the last one I'm looking at today, and number 15, is French beans. And these are a new one on me. These are called Boston. I think last year I grew sort of like a purple bean and they were, um, what were they called? I've got them written down here. Uh, Mystique, that's right. Yeah, I grew Mystique last year. They're French, sort of French bean, dwarf French bean, uh, really prolific. And I got absolutely loads and loads of beans off them and they're purple. But when you cook them, the purple disappears and they go green, which is always a bit of a disappointment. But, but anyway, yeah, they grow really well. And you can be sowing your French beans now. I shall sow mine, keep them in the polytunnel until things have warmed up a little bit later on in April before they go out, you know, after hardening them off. But yeah, if you haven't tried dwarf French beans. I much prefer them to climbing French beans and much easier to pick. And also when it's really windy up on my allotment, because they grow so low to the ground, they don't really get affected by the wind and I get really good crops. Right, that's that list done. Uh, yeah, and I'm gonna be saying all of those in the next few weeks. So I promised you a quick look at the tomatoes. 
Uh, I was a bit worried about them actually. I didn't think they were all going to germinate, but I have actually had 100% germination in this tray and in the other one, which is still in the lounge. But yeah, I sowed, if you remember in the last video, a couple of seeds per, per variety. They haven't all, like this one's only come up with one, but some have come up with two. Uh, so what I'm going to do, rather than destroy them actually, I'm going to break these apart, pot them up probably in the next week or so, and then take some to my neighbors, but also take some back to my mum's because I promised her some unusual tomatoes this year. But yeah, don't they look great? Absolutely lovely. Right, so that's the tomatoes um, doing well. These will go back indoors, too cold out here at the moment for them. Uh, and these are the sweet peas, which had sort of a bit of a hit and miss germination, to be honest. So I shall be supplementing uh, these with some new seeds, which I've saved from last year. But yeah, so these are the sweet peas. So I've got a few more of those to sow. That's it for this video, folks. That's been Chris in the garden, in his polytunnel. I'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye for now.